Through the woods beyond the bay, Joseph slowly makes his way. Sleeve is all he's got. Right and left, and left and right. Right and left and left and right, tramping, stumbling through the night. A narrator tells a story. This is rather a pretty spot, isn't it? Let me stop for a moment. The soldier sits down by the stream. The life of a soldier. What can I say? You wouldn't understand the things I've seen and done. Frankly, I... The memories, the blood, the dreams about blood. Sleeping in a different place every night but falling asleep to the same dreams. And then each week, and this always makes me laugh, it's just so funny, each week they pay you as if you were doing a regular job. A tiny little envelope of bills and coins, not too many. <laughs> it's hilarious, really, because you see the... What was I saying? He takes his knapsack off his back. I'm a bit confused. He opens the knapsack. And why is his pack such a disorderly mess? Is St. Joseph's medals gone? No, no. Oh, yes, it's there, thank God. His patron saint, you see. And it's gold-plated, at least you'd have to agree. He takes more things out. Wait, that's me in there an old battered mirror for combing his hair, and then a few bullets, but, oh, no, no, help! He suddenly lets out a piteous yelp. Where's his girlfriend's picture? A source of joy every single night for this lonely boy. She gave it to him herself. Oh, God! Oh, no! He's wrong. It's right there. How odd. 
And finally, from the bottom of the upside-down pack, he pulls a lovely violin. Look, not one crack. Well, I got this whole thing at such a low price. You have to constantly tune it to make it sound nice. The devil approaches a soldier from behind. He puts his hand on the soldier's shoulder. Oh, please, give me your violin. What? No. Oh, then please sell it to me. Absolutely not. No, I won't. I... Fine, let's trade then. I'll give you this book. A book? No, I'm... I'm illiterate. I'm sorry. I can't read. I... No, no. Don't worry about that. You actually don't need to know how to read. This wonderful book reads itself. Indeed, it's not just a book. It's a treasure chest. Merely by opening it, you'll find the best of what the world has to offer. Oh, no. I'm not being funny. There are stock certificates there, and money. Well, a hungry bear has to follow the honey. Oh, your miserable life could be bright and sunny. Yes, I can't read it, but I can't understand. Oh, you catch on. See? Profits and... Here's loss over here. Interest there. But if we make this trade, I'm... I'm worried about it because, as you say, this book is so valuable and my violin isn't really worth that much. It then this sounds like a rather good deal for you. Well, it's good for someone. I'm not sure who. But you know, what the hell? I have nothing to lose. Why not? Your miserable life could be bright and sunny. The devil hands the book to the soldier who starts to read, moving his lips and following the words with his finger. 
The terms in the book are incomprehensible. Certificate of deposit payable on demand. They shake hands on the deal. The devil takes the violin and the soldier keeps on reading the book. Leveraging of assets. Securities. Buyouts. Mortgages. Bonds. Wow, the Nodium stock are doing really well. That's amazing. A hundred a share. A hundred a share at 4 p.m. on March 31st. Now, that's really, that's, but wait a minute. Wait. Today's only March 28th. <laughs> that's a riot. That's hilarious. This is a book that tells about things, things that, haven't happened yet. I mean, this book is really... <laughs> my God, this book is... Look, you have to come home with me for just three days. No, I can't afford any sort of delays. You need to teach me. This only makes squeaks. No, my leave is over in just two weeks. In my favorite vehicle, you'll get home very fast. And I don't know when I saw my mother last, and she's waiting for me, and my girlfriend as well. well you'll come home rich. With great stories to tell. Well, but where do you live? Is it far from here? Dear boy, <laughs> just come. You have nothing to fear. You'll be bathed, washed, taken care of, fed, the softest pillows, the fluffiest bed. Well, but what sort of food will there be to eat? Why, at every single meal, we have fantastic meat. And to drink, I wonder, what can I get? Unimaginable wines that you'll never forget. And is smoking permitted? Oh, extraordinary cigars. Wrapped in gold paper are free in our bars. It was all just the way he hoped it would be. He followed the old man and was quick to see that the old man had been honest. He had to agree that the level of service, the dinners, all free, to which he'd been invited, even the cups of tea. They surpassed expectation in the highest degree. He'd taught the violin, and he'd been taught, in turn, the secrets of the book. He'd had a chance to learn how its magic could be used to make him rich, and he'd thought, God, I'm a lucky son of a bitch. So two days passed that were well worth his time, and on the third morning, as he heard the clock chime, the old man appeared and said, Well, are you ready? He jumped up, but strangely he felt a bit unsteady, and somehow a bit weak. But then the old man asked if he enjoyed his stay. Well, actually, he basked in the awe the pleasures of this amazing new life. But he had to suppress a bit of internal strife that he felt in his heart, so he simply said, Oh, yes, it was nice. They got in the vehicle, the old man knocked once, then twice, and all of a sudden they were in the sky. They saw the countryside rushing by far below. Our soldier screamed. The old man yelled, Hold on tight! And beamed from ear to ear. It made him laugh to hear our soldier squeal like a terrified calf being led to the slaughter. And then the second half of the journey was very quiet. And finally they landed and everything looked just as it had before.
Oh, thank God, finally. Home. I'm so happy. Oh, look, it's, yes, it's Mrs. Chapui, tending her garden as always. <laughs> My God. Hello, Mrs. Chapui. Hi, how great to see you. How have you been? <clears throat> she didn't seem to hear me. But wait, there's Louis. Hey, Louis. He's mowing his lawn with that big old lawnmower of his. My good old friend, Louis. But what? But why didn't he hear my friendly cry? Doesn't he recognize me? I'm the same old guy I was last week. I'm Joseph, Joseph, hello, hi, I, I, I'm Joseph, you know. You, you have to recall the times we spent together and yet it all seems to somehow have disappeared. So, Lewis leaves his lawnmower and heads down the road. And Joseph walks in the opposite direction but his pace is slowed by his troubled thoughts. And now he comes to his old school where the familiar old clock tower continues to unspool the ribbon of time. And every familiar, well-worn old tool, the old ladder, the old rake, seems to sit comfortably in its familiar spot. And now he sees the old inn, the shops, the vacant lot, and now people appear, children, women, men, and they look at him, they stare, they see him, but then, hmm, what's going on? Are they afraid of me? It's Joseph, Joseph, can't you see? And then a door closes, then one more, and another, and another, and... In his very core, he feels a chill. But then his heart suddenly begins to soar in the way it often did before the war, as he imagines the person he can never doubt. Surely my old mother is somewhere about. Wait, she's there. She sees him. She stares. She screams. She runs inside and hides, and all of his dreams come crashing down. But one hope remains. His girlfriend, who's bound to him by the powerful chains of love, for whom he's gone through such distress, and in the distance, he sees her. Of course he knows that dress. He gave it to her. And he runs toward her, and she takes his hand in hers, looking first at the ground, then briefly at his face. She says, Look, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Things happen, darling. That's all I can say. I met Freddie. We fell in love. We married. It just happened that way. These are our boys, Alphonse and René. And when he was once again alone, our soldier remembered the devil and said, Oh, my God, you thief, you terrible thief of human souls. You preyed on my weakness and you destroyed me. I know who you are now. I know what happened. I understand. It wasn't three days. It wasn't three days. It was three years. Of course, they think I'm a ghost. They all think I'm dead. And standing among them, among the living, it's as if I really were dead. Horrible, awful thief. What an idiot I was to listen to you. Yes, I was in a very bad state. I was exhausted. I was tormented. I was confused. I couldn't think straight. I was hungry. I was sick at heart. But for God's sake... If someone I don't know comes up to me and starts talking to me and making crazy suggestions, don't I usually tell him to go away? Don't I usually say, P -p please, I'm sorry. I don't know you. I can't talk to you now. You have to go away. Horrible. Horrible. I don't know how I could have done that. I... 
listen to him. I did everything he said. Why? Why? The devil appears again, and the soldier tries to kill him. Thief! Terrible! Dreadful! Pardon me. Are you? Ah, you vile thief! You... Do you know what I value more than almost anything else in the world? It's the principle of civility. Think what that means. The ability to settle our differences, not through blows and brute force, but through dialogue and reason. Start by taking a breath and saying to yourself, I feel calm, I feel serene, merely because I see things somewhat differently from my friends. I don't need to become overexcited and hysterical. My friend and I can analyze our differences in an enjoyable exchange and achieve a happy resolution. You know, your face has assumed an ugly frown. I mean, even my cows, both white and brown, have achieved tranquility, so why can't you? Just think about the next thing you plan to do. I know that you're much more clever than you look. <laughs> Now, what have you done with my beautiful book? So with my things, I guess, over there. Then you have everything you need. And if anyone should dare to doubt that you're a soldier, you can simply say, watch this, my friend. I know how to obey. Stand at attention. Now put that away. Put your pack over there. Don't take all day. Now, at ease. At attention. At ease. At attention. Now, this is when I see what a soldier you really are. I think you'll win the Silver Star. Now, take off your hat. Here's this one instead. Give me the jacket. Now, cover your head. Here's your new jacket. Attention. At ease. Now. Where is the book? 
Go fetch it, please. I said the book, just the book. One thing above all, don't hold it like that. It's going to fall. If that book, my God, should come to harm, oh, please, for God's sake, hold it under your arms. Under any circumstances, it's worth so much more than its weight in gold. It really is the door to opportunity and wealth. It will let you win the game of life. And this violin will be the device that I myself will use. <laughs> and on with book and violin, we cannot lose. And so our soldier once again forgot about his whole life and once again he started to read from the book. And the book was like a mill. And reading the book was like making the mill grind. But what the mill ground out was not flour or salt. It was money. Piles and piles and piles of money. He read as much as he could the money kept pouring out, he could have the things he needed, and he didn't doubt that he could have all the things that he wanted as well. And all of a sudden, he became a merchant, a peddler of things. Come along, ladies and gentlemen, what would you like? We have every color, black, White, navy, aquamarine, the color of putty, the color of sand, silver, violet, seductive satin, bedroom satin, whatever you want. At first, you see, he sold things for money, but then he realized he could manipulate men because he knew the future, foresaw it all. He watched everyone else pathetically crawl in total ignorance through their lives like worker bees inside their hives. It wasn't just a book. It was a treasure chest. Merely by opening it, one found the best. You can have everything, he thought. If you have a desire, don't be afraid to dream bigger. Look higher. You'll get every single thing that you want to get. You may soon be dead, but you're not dead yet. Take this, take that, take a, 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 another of those. You can afford it. Take the elephant, the rose, everything, everything. But then, wait, stop. What are these things? Even as I hold them in my hands, they're growing somewhat smaller. They're becoming ugly, sticky, dirty. No, no, the, the, the beautiful orange shrinks turns black. The fruit has rotted and turned into ash, and only the horrible peels remain. Oh, my God, what's happening here? And a ring of sweat suddenly forms on his brow. I'm not happy. I feel sick. The things I wanted for so long, I have them now, but I'm still not happy. They didn't help me at all because they're all dead. They're rotten and dead. And the things I used to love have been taken away from me. The good things, the things that really did help, the things that cost nothing, that belong to everyone, and everyone else still has them. I'm the only one who doesn't have them anymore. Do you remember how we lie in the grass? The sun would Go down, the hours would pass. Saturday night, the feeling of the earth beneath us, <laughs> the neighbors would be watering the lawn, and we'd hear these little fragments of conversation without even knowing whose yard they came from. Hey, where did you put the watering can? Tell your brother to come inside. 
and the little girls would be playing those crazy games and shouting in the distance, and someone would come around with a pitcher and refill our glasses. <laughs> And it all cost nothing. Anyone could live like that. We didn't have money, but we had everything we needed. Oh, my God, I wish I could go back to all that. I wish I could go back. I wish I could. Oh, what have you done to me, Satan? What have you done? Can the book help me now? He opens the book, goes from chapter to chapter, no idea where to look. I want to give it all up. I want to share the joys of all the penniless girls and boys. Can the book show me how? Please, help me. Then suddenly a loud ringing of the phone penetrates his skin and goes right to the bone. Yes, hello, it's Bob. And some interesting stocks have come on the market, and barring any shocks, we can get them cheaply. Call me later, please. The phone rings again. Look, I'm on my knees. Please leave me alone while I try to see if this book can pull me out of my misery. Time has passed, and we find our rich soldier sitting at a desk looking through the book. In a moment, the devil comes in dressed as an old woman selling junk. No one's ever been envied more than me. <sighs> but I'm suffocating. Please set me free. I live among the living, but I'm actually dead. Gold in my pockets, a heart made of lead. Excuse me, sir. May one come in? What? you want. Oh, I'd like to speak with you, sir. I wanted to, to say I, I've left all my things on the landing out there. Yes. Well, I'd like to share a thought. Oh, oh look, I've caught something you might have bought, something might well be fraught with meaning or simply nice to have around the house, to look at once or twice. Yes, and you wanted to say? Well, certainly. I... Wouldn't want to get in your way. But I do have some wonderful things in my bag just outside. Some diamond rings, fabric that was woven for various kings, and some... Look, not today. I just wanted to show you one or two. Yes, but my friend, I, I know you certainly can understand. I'm busy right now. Here, take this cash. Call it a prepayment. I'm sure that won't clash with any of your values. Well, no. I'm offended. I mean to say, you've really upended the rules of the game. Do you think that it's funny to offer me money for nothing? Well, really. The name for that sort of behavior is insulting, my friend. Let me go and bring in my sack. Oh, jewels? A necklace? A mirror? A watch? Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. It's hardly a blotch on your copybook, sir. If you don't buy, I'll be upset, of course, but I'm not going to cry. <laughs> Who would listen? So what about some lace? In a decent wedding, it would be a disgrace not to have any. Oh, of course, you're not married, so... I wouldn't doubt that you're properly buried all feelings of that sort. So let me resort. 
I, I'm just doing my job, you see, just doing my job to offer you this gold medal. One of the nicest things I've ever had to peddle. Or what about this? A portrait in a frame? Hmm. Based on your strong reaction, I think my aim was rather good. Perhaps on that last shot, I think you really liked that a lot. But not enough to buy? Uh, then what about this? Oh, I see. That inspires a kind of what? Bliss? Oh, so this is the thing. <laughs> How much do you want? How much do you want for that violin? Oh, between friends, of course, there's neither lose nor win. Oh, I'll let you test it out, just to be nice. Afterward, we can discuss the price. But, but it doesn't play anymore. Horrible violin. I hate it. A horrible book. I hate that too. beyond the bay, moonlight paints the evergreens gray, marching, stumbling, going where, weeping, trembling, doesn't care, first the stream, then the bridge, now he's climbing up the ridge, no idea where he's going, like a crazy river overflowing. In all directions, its banks destroyed by some odd earthquake. His heart devoid of all emotions except the desperate need to run, to flee, to escape from greed. He's thrown away his treasures, all his things, the stocks, the bonds, the medals, the rings. He's abandoned it all, really doesn't want it back, and now He's almost as he was, but without his pack. Through these meadows he has to roam, because they used to be his home. But this lonely, this soil, it's not his anymore. And so he turns around. It was painful, and it was awful to be there. Awful to be there. And so he turns around and walks away from the village where he used to live. And all he has in his pocket is a small amount of cash. Well, a large amount of cash. Well, a very large amount of cash that he somehow failed to leave behind when he ran away and thought he was leaving everything behind. But now suddenly he sees different trees, a different land, a different town. The roofs are red, the pavement brown. He wanders toward a little inn. He enters, thinking, could I begin again? Who knows what life might have in store? 
He orders a drink, then one or two more. Over the nearby window, there's a curtain, all white, made of a lovely fabric, delicate, light. And through an opening in the curtain, he sees swaying leaves, and then he's almost certain, well, well, <laughs> my God, he notices something extremely odd. Someone outside is playing a drum. A crowd has gathered. Now here they come. They come into the inn. An official speaks. It seems the king's daughter has been ill for weeks. He can't talk, can't sleep or eat, lies silently, quaking beneath a sheet. If any man can bring her back to life, that man may have her forever for his wife. And just at that moment, a young fellow walked in. He had a friendly face, an agreeable grin, a hearty demeanor, a healthy tan. Hey, Joseph, he said. Good to see you, man. I'm a fellow soldier. What do you think? When I spotted you, I thought I could buy that guy a drink. But you look a little sad, so I rushed inside. You see, this is my thing. I roam far and wide looking for people I can help, my friend. So seriously, your troubles are going to come to an end. I happen to be married, so the daughter of the king is off limits for me. But by God, that ring's going to fit very well on your finger. I'm telling you, man, don't hesitate. Don't linger. Try your luck. You have nothing to lose. You can't just sit here guzzling booze. Tell the king's guard you're in the medical corps. Tell them anything. Just get in the door. Just do it, man, he said, and banged on the table. It's worth it, even if you find you're unable to succeed in the end. Well, thanks for the advice, our soldier said, and he didn't think twice. If I set out now, I'll reach the palace by dawn. He cheerfully waved, and then he was gone.
Well, so the next morning at the palace, the band played and the crowd cheered, and all of a sudden the king appeared, stroking his enormously long white beard. And he asked just the question our soldier had feared. Are you a doctor? Well, he felt a bit weird, but he managed to say, Well, uh, yes, of course. You know, a doctor in the cavalry, a doctor on a horse, and I have at my command some superior techniques. Good, said the king, because we've been plagued by freaks, by frauds and phonies. My patience is gone. Come tomorrow morning, we'll meet on the lawn just in front of the Golden Gate. Yes, certainly, said the soldier. That's absolutely great. Well, he thought, that fellow at the inn had been quite right. I'll be so happy to have a princess beside me at night. What do you think, my friends? Is this going to work? Six of hearts, ten of hearts. Yes, the hearts are going berserk. <laughs> yes, a woman beside me. And the daughter of the king. I arrived before you did. Don't talk and don't sing. It was a mistake to denounce your own good fortune. You tempted fate. You worked yourself up into a ridiculous state that you were about to regret. But it will be too late. Six of hearts, ten of hearts. Uh, you thought it all looked good. You thought it would certainly turn out the way it should. Do you still believe that, you simple clown? The violin is the weapon that will cut you down. No, stop that. Be courageous. Kick him. Slap him in the face. I'm afraid he's not a member of the human race. He can't be defeated. He... No, you're wrong. You'll be able to beat him. He's not that strong. His power resides in the money he gave you. If you can give it back to him, I swear it will save you. Just challenge him at cards. He's bound to win. Good, sir. A game. Would you like to join in? Excuse me? I asked you. Would you like to play? <laughs> My dear friend, <laughs> I love cards. I can play all day. He's addicted to winning, whatever the cost. He'll win, you'll lose, and then he'll be lost. Gold, paper, and coins. An excellent start. Now, how much shall we bet? I think it's an art to pick the right stakes. Mm, four point, let's say ten. Oh, no. A hundred. Well, all right, but then you're taking a huge risk. You might lose the book. You've lost the violin already, and after all, <laughs> look, even a noble knight like you, when his cash is gone, becomes just a miserable, helpless pawn. <laughs> I win! <laughs> you won't even be able to buy clothes or shoes. That's how badly you're going to lose. <laughs> You'll be walking around naked with nothing to drink or eat. No vegetables, no fruit, no wine, no meat. Oh, ah, I win! Ah, if you have no food, I've heard people say, you begin to feel uncomfortable after just one day. On the second day, you begin to feel ill. And in the following days, a Terrible chill spreading through your body and a shortness of breath initiates the process that leads to death. <laughs> Raise him a thousand. A thousand, friend. Oh, my goodness, you're crazy. <laughs> but how will this end? <laughs> I win. <laughs> now five thousand. Five thousand. Oh, now, I certainly wouldn't want to offend, but are you absolutely sure that is wise to spend so much money on a single head? Oh, my God! I, I win! I don't understand. Now, 
everything you have. Everything I have. Ace of spades. Queen of hearts. You've won once more. <laughs> I, I, I won the battle. You've won the war. You see? You see? He's almost done. And now, one more thing to add to the fun. Quickly, before he has a chance to think, offer him a glass of beer. Say, this will help your head to clear. Then hold his head and help him to drink. Here, this will do you a lot of good. <sighs> and seriously, if you're feeling ill, <sighs> this is better than any pill. It's brewed right here in the neighborhood. No. No, you're going too far. All right, here he goes. You <sighs> hear Thank God. I'm free. Hmm. Is he? No, no, no. He hasn't had enough yet. A few drops more of this delicious brew. Take it. It belongs to you. Dear princess, someone's coming to cast a spell, coming quickly to make you well. He can cure you, he knows just how. He's capable of everything now. He dares to come, he wants to cry. Once he was crippled, now he can fly. His soul was lost, then he found himself, saved himself from death. Now he'll fight for you till his very last breath.
See your kingdom's very small. And if you cross the borderline, I promise you will then be mine. And if you dare to try the smallest trick, I will grab you once again and make you very, very sick. I hate you. Now you look to wounds and I will stop at nothing. Poison vermin charms! Or let's take a drive to a place where I will roast you both alive.
You can't be here and also there, or sit on the floor but also in a chair. Eat all the food yourself but also share? If the meat's well done, it can't be rare. You see, if you're experiencing a happy moment now, you can't suddenly at the same time experience some happy moment you enjoyed in the past. And if you could, the two brightly colored moments would blur together until they became the color of mud. My life is complete, he always said, but rather surprisingly, the woman he'd wed looked at him one day and made some remark like, I know nothing about you. I'm kept completely in the dark. I've cut all ties with my past, he tried to explain. Even the thought of it causes me pain. Yes, there was a village, a house, a mother, sweeter and kinder than any other. You can't have the things you have today, and also the things that have gone away. You can't be today's madam or sir, and also be the girl or boy you were. You have to choose. That's the law of life. You can't have this and also that. A single man can't have a wife. A dog can't also be a cat. They depart. They're almost there. They hear the strange tick-tock of the ancient, eccentric village clock. Approaching the borderline, he's a few feet ahead. She feels, for a moment, a strange sort of dread. Thank you.